Well, at least have to, like, they have to see it. No? You're mental. Can I flip the image? Uh, yeah, you can. What's up, man? All right, so we have in three of the new Pioneers. We have the new 501, the new 6, or 6,000, and the new 5,000. We're going to talk mm -hmm. about these guys today. A couple questions about this one to see if we had these in stock. We do. So the question was, is the new 500, 501, is it a short chassis? It's a short chassis. Does it have six channel pre-op? It has six channel pre-op. They're all high voltage. So that's really cool. This is gonna be a really hot unit if you're into the single DIN, short chassis, Barry radio on the dash kind of thing. It also does the ARC app. So you'll be yep. able to control everything on this from your phone. Uh, it's gonna have the 13 band EQ and all that fun, fun stuff. Funness. Uh, then you have the 600. This is a CD player. It also has six channel output. This However, is the 6000. Yeah, my bad. Uh, this is gonna be two volts of output for those of you guys counting at home. It's a BS, so this one will do Sirius XM. That's right there. And then it's little brother. Basically, it seems like it's gonna be the same, Jason. same radio, different display screen, right? Same display, different yeah. display. Uh, different display, a little lesser display, the 5000. There again, still has six channel pre-out. This is a BT though, so it has no Sirius XM capability. A little more basic display screen. Yep. So those are three of the new single DIN DEH and MVH Pioneer radios that have just arrived here in the last week. We have a couple more that are gonna finish out the lineup coming yep. in next week. So we'll go ahead and show you those. It's up from South Florida. So yeah. Que tal Ramses? Uh, what's go. up, Gwen? If you guys haven't played with the ARC app, it's a pretty cool app. You could yeah. probably, if you can find one of these on display, it's done over Bluetooth. You can pair your phone to it and control everything from it. We have a couple videos showing you guys yeah. how to do that, of course. I want to check one of those out. Maybe go into like a buys that are best or, you know, your local guy that right. might just have one of these laying around. Yeah. What's going what on? What does it say? Request on my NDX. How come my poker audio tweeters seem to distort when I set crossovers on my NEX down too? Well, I'm assuming your pokes have a passive crossover, and the passive crossover is going to give you a bottom for the tweeter, a top for the mid-range, meaning the tweeter will only plays so low, the mid-range will only play so high, and then the deck will give you the bottom for the mid-base. If you're not using an external amplifier, you're only using the 18 watts by four or 50 watts by four amp built into it. Once that amp starts to clip, you're gonna hear it in the tweeters first because they're the most sensitive, brightest thing. So more than likely when you're turning the crossover down lower, mm -hmm. the speaker is distorting faster, it's clipping, it's feeding back through to the tweeter and you're hearing it through the tweeter. So yeah. easy way to solve that is to get an outboard amplifier. What's up, Raul? What's up, Philip? Um, let's see. What's up? What's up, What's everyone? Up? I want to replace the speakers. Do I need to replace the app, the amp too? Uh, okay, so your 2000 Dodge Ram. Mm -hmm. If you just want to replace the speakers, that's where that's one of those cars you run into funky things with because if it does have the factory amplified system, the speakers in the doors are six by nine inch subwoofers. Meaning, if you go buy a cool set of coaxial six by nines and put them in there, you're not going to hear the tweeter. So really, what you need to do, you really can't just swap out speakers. That's one of those cars where it's like you have to do the radio, you have to do the speakers or you have to go all outboard amplifiers um, and integrate it with put like an amp pro in there so you can get a full range signal that goes into the doors there's really no easy way to just put a system into the amplified system without it sounding totally terrible plus a lot of those two have funky ohm load speakers where you're gonna yeah it's just not a good situation anytime we're doing something like that we're replacing the radio that's right. the way to look at that. Uh, Ramses, 4200 NEX is an excellent radio, definitivamente. Okay, Steven, I'm using the external amp. Should the tweeters be... Affected by the overall crossover? No matter what. Only play the Polk Audio 
crossover box is set to. Um, Sorry, Chad. I mean, realistically, no. But there again, if the mid-range is clipping, let's say you set them to 50 hertz, okay, and they don't do 50 hertz and the speakers are clipping, that's going to backfeed through the passive crossover network and get up into the tweeter. Plus, there again, if you're using an outboard amplifier and you have the gains up too high, it's clipping. A lot of the times when tweeters, tweeter is the most sensitive thing in the car. So if the amp is clipping, you're going to hear it in the tweeter first. Try turning it down. Yeah. All right. Or just go all active like they say. Wayne, <laughs> when I watch live, I get nothing done. Thank you, guys. Sorry. <laughs> well, neither do we. <laughs> Thank you for watching, buddy. Yeah. Uh, Victor, do you know if your Pioneer will offer uh, MBH2330 like the ABH2330? Um, right now, I think it's just going to be a 2300. The MVH line, you got to remember Pioneer's... Oh, hey, I'm dirty. The MVH line from Pioneer is something that they're really having a hard time here with in the U.S. because we're not totally sold on the no CD, even though most of us don't use CDs. Very few of us use these functionalities that these radios have. Um, they're not selling through as well. We're a little bit slow to adopt, so they're kind of pussyfooting around getting into this whole MVH line. What did Jason say? Uh, Jason say, uh, built and the speak, the speak, the amp built on yeah. to the speakers on yeah. the Dodge. So I don't, I don't know on an 07 if it is or not, because I don't know it's how far new. back that goes. Yeah. I thought that was the newer body. Either way, it, I thought it was. No, it's in the uh, that 07. That's gonna be. Oh, it's gonna be behind the glove box. That one should be the one behind the glove box. That yeah. one hard to get to. Okay. Anyway, sorry. It was the F1. Uh, the Dodge. The Ram. Dodge Ram. Okay. All right. I have a Lexus. IS 250 and I want to replace the speakers, but I'm having trouble finding the right speakers. Which one do you recommend? That comes down to perf personal preference as far as right speakers. I mean, there's a ton of awesome speakers out there. Uh, pick a budget that you're willing to spend and then just try to go listen to some of those or hear what people recommend. I mean, if you're looking for a really nice speaker that doesn't break the bank, the Kenwood Exelons will do that all day long. They're an awesome sounding speaker. Uh, all around uh you know we talk a lot about the rockford punch the focal focal makes access they mm -hmm. also make auditor they're also really nice and reasonably priced if you want to go crazy there again focal makes some hertz makes some uh and there's a dozen other speaker high-end speaker manufacturers out there just pick a price and just kind of work from there all right uh vg say hey guys i have a double dm pioneer 490 that's, that's bs a that's a b now uh, yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah, no, um, sorry, go ahead. And I got installed in the Best Buy. Any reason why I can choose the screen adjustment? Uh, the option is grayed out. Yeah, anything that's break. grayed out in your menu system has to do with the light green emergency brake wire. Hopefully, they went ahead and hooked up the light green emergency brake wire. You should be able to turn the car on and pull the emergency brake or push the emergency brake to get those functions to come back on. They're locked out if the bypass hasn't been done on that. If they didn't hook the emergency brake up to anything, then you're not gonna be able to get to it, take it back, and at least have them hook it up to the emergency brake. I'm pretty sure they probably did though, so just turn the car on, pull or push the emergency brake, and those features should unlock. Okay, love you videos, guys. I'm a computer technologist and an audio pipe. Audio file. Yeah, when, I, when I'm out, when out oh and God, got the Kenwood. Kenwood. Yeah. yeah. Cool. He's just thanking us. Yeah. Thanks, man. Glad you got it. Hello, Hello from India. From hey. India. Nice. Whatever. Okay. Okay. How can I? How can I keep my factory control? HD. What? A mid. A mid screen on the Civic 2012 when I change my stock radio. Um, right now, I don't know of any solutions for that. Uh, I don't know of any solutions for that right now. No, like the volume display, etc. Oh, um, yeah, no, the, the, like... the, the steering wheel control interface, you know, yeah. like a, a PAC, CP2, SWIRC, Access, um, all those should allow you to keep the volume control and stuff like that. Uh, the, the little menu in the center of the dash, those menu buttons aren't going to go away when you replace the radio. Um, the only thing that would go away is like if you have station names or something like that, they're not going to display in the in the gauge cluster. J J T P, loved your show. He's from Tampa. Cool hey, man. Cool. Um, let's, uh, Keep going. 
Let's see. Uh, what was that saying? I was asking a question about the new. F uh, hi, is MVHX fifty eight hundred DSP? No. No. Uh, I thought you said. 2000. I thought you said two thousand. Yeah, the two thousand. I might have yes. said two thousand. You know, I, I might have. Come said on, 2000. man. I'm sorry. <laughs> Uh, 2014 Toyota Corolla have the high, low, and the remote running from behind the radio for a monoblock amp. Getting engine noise through the sub, noise filter, or run the remote from the new location. Uh, you're not going to get noise from a remote turn on, so it's not going to be a remote turn on that's creating noise. More than likely, you're going to want to check your amp's ground, make sure you have a good ground, um, or check the RCA but I mean or the amp a lot of the times too it depends on the amp if you have a good quality amp you should not get engine noise in a in a in that scenario but your noise is not going to be coming from remote turn on I don't think I've ever 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 had engine noise come over a remote turn on all right Steven one more cool the higher any X series if you want to test that theory unplug the remote turn on and just jump your battery over to your remote turn on and see if you still have the noise Okay, okay. Sorry, uh, what could the higher NEX series offer besides Navi, Clear, Su yeah, Clear System, and HDMI? Do you guys think that use If it justifies those things? the price? Yeah. yeah um, okay, so when it comes to Clear Resistive as opposed to Capacitive Touch, Capacitive Touch definitely looks the best. The thing you always have to keep in mind is how often are you looking at this display screen when you're driving down the road? Functionality of the capacitive touch is a little better for things like Android Auto or Apple CarPlay, mm -hmm. but it's usually not enough to be like, uh most people buy your your thumbs up yeah. picture. Most people buy those radios because they have the money and they're like, I just want the best of the best of the best. Not necessarily that the features are lacking though, because like the 2330 and the new 2300, 1300, 1330, 3300, those are all badass radios and have features that even the newer that the older NEX don't have. So I wouldn't, yeah, I mean, I would not, not buy one. I What's mean, that, John? Especially if you don't need navigation. Uh, any recommendation for a uh, 2000, let's see, uh, 2015 Nissan Altima steering wheel controls? Uh, yeah, I get the CP2, S, uh, Pack Audio CP2. And you download the app to your phone. We've tried to show it here before, and of course it crashed, but uh, usually quite successful. And I think that if it has the OnStar, I mean, if it has the factory Bluetooth, they might sell that bypass plug now. Um, that's that new part. Okay, let's see. Oh, you're welcome, B. I, okay, so, Dre, so I have two questions. Two questions. Hold on, on that Nissan, if you buy this guy right here, if you have the factory Bluetooth, and it tells you that you need to go underneath the seat or whatever to loop wires together, Pack Audio makes this part right here now, and what it is is it's the loop. So you just unplug your factory Bluetooth, plug this piece in, and you're done. So all you have to do is hook up the wires behind the radio. It's a pretty cool piece. All right, Dre, uh, say I have two questions. How can I bypass the Pioneer Premier AVIC F90VT head unit? Also, I have a Kicker CXA 300.4 and a 300.1 amp. Both are running hot when I play high volume. Okay, yeah. so all what kind of amps are they? It's the kickers. Kickers. Three hundred and a three hundred point one. They're gonna run hot just because that's what they're gonna do. As far as bypassing that radio, email me, um, and I'll have to send you a picture on how to do that. Uh, it has to do with the yellow black wire. You have to move it up or over depending on the harness you have. Uh, if you could sell, send me a picture of the harness that has the RCA harness that has a yellow black wire in it. Just email me to 5 star car stereo at yahoo.com and I can mail you the picture of how to bypass it. I mean, I can email you. Yeah, okay. All right. What is your option on resist? What? What's your opinion? What is your opinion? On resist, resist capacitive touch as far nice. as glare goes. I think they both suck. Um, I think the glare is, is, is always a problem. However, we did have that customer that came in with the. Was it a Corvette? The Corvette guy that came in, and on Amazon, they sell a screen for it. If you search uh, anti-glare for Pioneer yeah. 8200, mm -hmm. they have an anti-glare screen for already cut and ready to go, and he had it on his, and it looked awesome. I mean, there was no glare at all. So definitely something if you have glare on your 
touch screens, you may want to check that out. Um, I found yeah. it on there. I don't know if I put a link to it in anything yet, but we were going to get a couple in at some point and try them out. All right, Chris, what is the best backup camera? Uh, check out the video. Uh, it's in the playlist for iSimple and Echo Master and all that's called my favorite backup camera. <laughs> Whoopi say, hey guys. Hey, you guys say my components. I was definitely clipping them. Okay. <laughs> All right, um, hey guys, any recommendation to a Prius 2013 as far as stereo? Um, anything you want to do. I mean, when it comes to us recommending a stereo for you, it's really hard to just say, hey, you need this for that, for that car. Um, really, at the end of the day, it's the harnesses you're going to need. So like that, if it's got factory steering wheel controls and stuff like that, you're going to want to check out like the RP4.2 TY, I believe, 11 or something like that, which is Pack Audio's uh, smart interface to retain all the fun stuff that the car has. If you got a factory backup camera, they make a harness for that. Um, iData makes a harness also. Might not yeah. be go back that far, might, I don't know. Um, but it really comes down to features. You know, if you want Android Auto, Apple, or Apple CarPlay, both Kenwood and Pioneer have brand new units out. Something like a 6904, which isn't even on their website, but is out. It's their brand new 6.4 inch touchscreen with Android Auto and Apple CarPlay, really reasonable. Plus. Of course, we've said here before, the new Pioneer lineup of NEX radios. So check those out if you want those features. Otherwise, yeah, just buy Pioneer Kenwood. Or if you're an Alpine guy, buy one of the 207s, really nice piece too. All right, so let's see, the audio 1.2? Yeah, 1.2. F capacitor, yeah, yeah. Necessary a car audio 400 watts, active woofer. I'm not a fan of okay. stiffening capacitors at all. I just refer to them, and I've said this before, I refer to them as spray paint cans with voltmeters on them. There's no replacement for a battery. If you're only having something as small as a 400 watt amplifier, definitely don't add the capacitor because that's going to actually draw more current than the amplifier is actually going to need. And it could actually harm the system and cause low voltage to the amplifier. So I wouldn't deal with that. Really, a 400 watt amp, a nice 4 gauge, copper uh, oxygen free copper and you're going to get the best performance out of that amplifier leave the capacitor out yeah all right are you guys going to show us anything from clarion clarion is strictly an internet company now yeah. they don't sell to dealers like us anymore they just sell to things like amazon and sonic electronics so the answer to that would be no and that's here in the united states only so in canada south america and the rest of the world they still actually have a presence but here they gave up on independent retailers and so I we got nothing. Uh, okay, guys, what do you think about Fuzzgate one channel, a hundred watts amp? Hundred watt amp? Mm-hmm. Uh, I wonder what are which ones you're talking about. I wonder if they're talking about those new little micro amplifiers that just, you know, the ones that just attach to the speakers that give you hundred watts. Mm. We did a review on those, the new little micro amps that don't the have power one? on ground. Huh? The silver one? Yeah, the little silver ones that just have a power harness onto them. You hook. We did a review on that. They actually do work. If you go into our Rockford Fosgate playlist, you can see those. Uh, it's like a mono hundred for each side. They come as a set of two. They actually do work. It's pretty funny. But yeah, go check that out. We do a voltage test on them so we can actually see the voltage double. So they're no joke. They actually do what they say they're going to do. Uh... Oh, thank you for the shout out. Hey, no problem, Jason. I mean, we watch. That's what the show is about. So. Yep. Alpine uh, X20AU versus uh, 4200 NEX. What was the, what's the difference? Or what's, no, what, what are your thoughts? thoughts? Yeah. Um, that's one of those questions I try to avoid anything Alpine versus anything Sorry, else. Alpine is a brand that kind of sets itself apart from everybody. And you buy Alpine because you're an Alpine fan. Plain and simple. There's no other reason to own an Alpine unless you just love Alpine. Like, I like Alpine amps and I like Alpine speakers. That's where my love for them kind of stops. Um, you know, but there's a group of you out there that love Alpine head units. They do sound amazing. Where I get disappointed or frustrated, I should say, with Alpine is typically the speed of the radio and also the feature set. And for some reason, I haven't figured out why they haven't updated their Bluetooth to a modern Bluetooth yet, because their Bluetooth typically sounds like crap. So that's where I'm at on Alpine. 
All right, uh, hi, 22, uh, says, uh, it's possible to swap the radio on a 2013 Charger RT with the Beats Audio. Yes. The factory radio has the heat seaters control it. Um, yeah, you're going to want to check out the iData link, Maestro, for that one, and a radio that's compatible with it. So yep. any one of the new NEX radios or any one of the Kenwood radios that has a touchscreen will interface with that system so yep. go to iData link maestro type in your car and it'll give you a list of all the features you can retain dapping say a recommendation on a five channel um thanks uh chad right below it said yeah Alpine five channel the PDX, or the kingwood the pdx v9 is one of my favorites yep. uh, a lot of people like the new uh, like the kenwood excellent xr 900.5 as a competitor to the pdx v9 we sell Alpine, so we're going to push the Alpine PDX V9. I feel it's a little better amplifier. However, when you have the 801.5 Kenwood Exelon amplifier, if you're looking for something small like 70 by 300, that is my all-time favorite five-channel amplifier. It's compact. It fits almost anywhere. They make two versions, a marine version and a car version. That's great. You see us put them in Jeeps all the time because they're marine and they can get a little wet. I sold my Alpine. Yeah. Yeah, uh, saludos, happens. Angelo Campos. Uh, I love Pioneer head units and amps. As far as speakers and subs, I'm good. John. That's fair. All right. <laughs> I'm not, I'm not gonna, uh, that's fair. I mean, you know, I mean, it's just like, yeah. I mean, I like All Rockford right. amps so and check subs. Uh, and sometimes say, they're speakers. Hey, Dean, how are you? I'm good. How I'm are from Bangladesh. Bangladesh. Okay. That's that's far away. Really? Yeah, that's it's, that's far away. That's cool. Do you guys do dash cams? If so, which one are good? I'm looking for one. Right now, we're kind of floating on the dash cam thing. Kenwood has the new ones that integrate with their radios as well as the old one that doesn't. That's really the only things we've had successfully. There are a ton of dash cam companies out there. Um, Jason, if you're still on, go ahead and, and pipe in on that one. Uh, fro, 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 Jesus. Fro. fro. Yeah. Um, I, we really haven't had a lot of success for those. Not a lot of call for them yet. Plus, there's a lot of inexpensive ones on the internet, and I think that's kind of what's flooding that industry as of right now. Um, so, no. Hello from Vancouver, Canada. You're eagerly waiting a review of the ILX 207. So am I. Yes. I am really looking forward to start playing with that one. Mm -hmm. we, we have a couple videos in the can that need to be edited. Uh, next week, we, we couldn't do it last week because he had a family thing he had to do. This week, we're really going to concentrate on getting the, the new Kenwood out um, or it filmed. And then the week after that is the Alpine. So we're about two weeks away on that. I'm sorry these things are taking so long. We weren't expecting this many radios to be released this fast. Plus, he's real limited on the amount of time he has to do these things. So we're trying. That's why we do all his other videos so you guys can enjoy that stuff. Aniruda, say, hey guys, nice work, keep it up. I'm using a factory stereo and a Hyundai. I uh, went to add an external amp for a four-door speakers, high-low converter or RCA output speaker. Which one should I use? Well, high-level to low-level or RCA out? Yeah. Um, I mean, well, you're going to need a high-level to low-level adapter to get RCA out. So for that, um, I'm going to recommend something like, at the bare minimum, a pack audio LP4 or LP7-4 would be the bare minimum I would sell you, but I would lean you more towards something like an LCQ, L, what is it, 7i, uh, LC7i yeah. from Audio Control, or if you want some adjustment, the L, LCQ1. Yeah. Sorry guys, a little tongue twisted today. All right, saludos para Denise en la Ciudad de México. Okay. Let's see, uh, Juice Bra. The uh, Z550BT. Hmm. All right, so the AVIC Z550BT mm -hmm. is not a radio we have here in the States, so I'm not familiar with that one. I've gotten a couple questions on that, so I, I need to do some more research and find out what radio that actually is in our lineup. Um, anything that has a 50 in it is European or the other side of the world for us, so we really don't get a chance to um, do anything with them. All right, uh, Fro. Yeah, only dash cams sold. Most customers are just looking for a budget project. Okay, so there again, dash cams, it's an internet thing. There's one that looks like that one that looks like a little film canister. It was like a little tube that we put yeah. in that guy's Jeep. That was, I guess, pretty nice. But um, Okay, 
JTP, when was the last time you installed, did install JVC? JVC? Uh, How were the? <laughs> we just installed the JVC, the used JVC in that lady's car, but that was it. Mm. Yeah, we really don't do much with JVC. I don't remember, man. Yeah, no, yeah, that didn't that didn't make the video. That'll make another video. That that got cut for time. Okay. So, but yeah, that was the uh, Malibu. Yeah. Um, where are you guys located? Clearwater, Florida. So I hope I hope you guys are liking the new style. We're doing the car audio diaries. Uh, they're a lot shorter, so we're trying to keep them within the 20 to 22 minutes. Um, you might notice in some of the videos, like we'll have different shirts on in the future. What we're doing is in order to keep them to that time frame that we feel that you guys are easy, it's easily easier for you to consume. What we're doing is we're removing some cars and we're going to be building videos like on days where we're, we're slower or whatnot, adding those things in. So if you see us wearing different shirts, just realize that car was from another day. Yeah. Magic of video. We're, we're just like the other guys. Uh, on TV where it's like oh it only took us one episode to build that whole car actually you had it for six freaking months so um, that's what's gonna happen if you guys see that we're just trying to, to we've been filming now we have like three weeks of backlog on the install diaries so we're hopefully gonna and we're really starting to get to the point where we can edit them faster that's why we had two back to back this week we'll probably have one more I'm gonna to try to get one more out before the end of the week don't hold me to that um, but yeah so those are going well we'll just leave it at that all right so let's see she's Tim say how long you guys are working together what did you start Four years four years yeah four years four years question where's the maximum amount of amps a four gauge OFC power wire can take I have an MBX mono amp yeah. with the A amp fuse, and I'm looking to add a small 2 4 channel amp. Okay, so if you've seen the videos, you always see us where we'll run a 4 gauge wire for each amplifier. Um, I don't like to stress out the power wire. There is a whole conversion chart, and at some point, we'll probably put a video. Um, what amp manufacturer does that? Uh, um, I just, uh, just no audio control audio control if you go to the audio control site and look at any of their amplifiers they actually in their owners manuals put the conversion chart it's amperage jaw per feet there's a whole flow chart for it you probably google it too um, a single four gauge wire technically should hold about at 18 feet it should hold about 100 to 120 amps of current so technically you should be okay adding an additional 30 amps however it's really not worth it to starve the amplifiers of power just buy an 8 gauge and run that little 30 amp off of that or buy another 4 gauge and run two 4 gauges either way that's why we run each amp has their own power lead there's no it's easier to do and it's safer all right, so Ali Personally, say that's just us. Ali say a Toyota Camry 2016 upgrading the speakers to six and a half size. How can I find the best speaker adapters? Toyotas. What do we use? Mecha? Yeah, we use speaker we, adapter wise. Yeah. The guy, the companies that have the best, like, is going to be Metra. So go to metraonline.com and see what they're listed. Um, I can tell you that if you buy the Focal fit speakers or integration series those will fit right in mm -hmm. so hey we're good good thank you right. Jesus guys were here yesterday <laughs> five dollar cheesecakes all day long uh, yeah um so yeah metroonline.com you can pick up the the brackets for those or at least find what they are and then pick them up someplace else. all right Moses Freaks is it's like the ABH 2330 2330 uh, 3300 models my question is uh, the way it shows up on the phone screen as well? Uh, no. When it plugs in, it says um, like Pioneer, Connection? Pioneer Connect. Yeah. At least it does on the iPhone. So, yeah, no. The, the question is on Waze. The new units do Waze from the phone. If you're using Android Auto, if you're using an iPhone, I'm assuming this is an iPhone question because Android Auto Waze is integrated fully into that now, and of course the phone isn't on when Android Auto is going. But as far as iPhone goes, when you're using the Waze app, 
It says connected to iPhone so the screen can be shut off. All right, how to manual tune the DDXX574BH? How to manual tune the radio frequency? Radio frequency. Like, um, okay, so there is a... I don't know. I'd Thank have you, to look Victor. In the menu. Yeah. There's a menu for that. Uh, I don't know where it's at. Um, sorry. All right. Do you guys know if you, there is any high wattage four by six speakers, like a hundred or two hundred watts? Actually, check out the um, John. Check out the Rockford um, Power Power Series four by six. Yeah. We actually just did a set of those in a the Evan Rude. Yeah, the, the semi truck, yeah. big ass Evan Rude, and um, we put the Kenwood seventy watt by four amplifier. I know that's, but they're rated higher than that. And holy crap, those those were yeah, wow. For a four by six, they're really nice sounding. They're also really they have like a protruding middle section. The tweeter sticks up kind of high, so if you need something flush, not gonna be the best to go with. But yeah. All right, Andy, say what run of the line of fuse holders and RCAs do you guys use? Rex Stinger. Stinger. We use all Stinger stuff. Stinger's Amp of America. So Stinger, if you didn't know, is part of Amp of America. Amp of America is Stinger, Phoenix Gold, Echo Master, Pack, Best Kits, and I think that's all they're pimping right now. It's all one big company. The Focal will be fit with Metra? No, the Focal integration series for Toyotas already have, it's a plug and play. You can go on to any video that we have that says Toyota or Focal in it, more than likely it's going to be for the Toyota. It's integration series by Focal. They come factory fit for the Toyota. So you pull your Toyota out, you plug this in. <laughs> if you go into the install diaries videos and go back, three or four one of them is like a toyota tundra install we yep. did and it's just the toyota tundra we did all full cal integration series on that you can get an idea of what i'm talking about rudy say send the cheesecake to don texas <laughs> yeah no we get these guys that come around it's like a non-profit every weekend every we, we had one yesterday we have one today and they sell like five dollar cheesecakes pound cakes all this other stuff i'm thinking it's a racket but they're actually pretty good cheesecakes yes. Uh, are you guys going to do a review on the new Pioneer yes. uh, 33? Yeah. Yes. Uh, that's going to be a ways away. I, it's it's an oddball radio, we know. Um, we're planning on doing a review. It's just time permitting. We're trying to bang these things out as fast as we can. Uh, Jack Wall? Plus, the other thing to keep in mind, too, the 3300 is the exact same radio as all the others. So, as far as features go, they're identical. So if you go watch the video we did on the 2330, it's the same thing minus Bluetooth. I'm sorry, minus HD tuner and uh, front-facing camera. Yep. So really the only thing the video is going to show differently is the back of the radio and the wiring harness. So if that's what you're waiting for, I apologize. Otherwise, all the features are identically the same. Okay, can Pioneer play iPod 7 Series, 7 Series generation Yeah. to the aux? Yeah, I mean, if you have the aux to lightning adapter, why wouldn't it? Yeah. Well, you do it all the time when we're demoing cars. Let's see, when is the latest time that you see the Orion 145 watts cobalt uh, blue amp? I haven't seen one in a long time. I do have some Orion cobalt original blue dot series 12-inch woofers in my living room at yeah. Van Passes. Um, so they got the original Orion logo as a blue dot. It was the first generation Cobalt woofers, so I've had them for a while. Yeah. Six uh, by eights and five by sevens as far as those go. Um, you know, Rockford makes a really nice set if you're looking there again. The, the Power Series is going to be the premium four by six, five by seven. You also have uh, Hertz Energy makes one that's really nice. Focal Access makes one. Um, there's plenty of them out there. All right, guys, we got to get back to work. Yep. We hope you enjoyed this. Thanks for stopping by and saying hi and chatting with us. We appreciate all the time that you dictate to or you give us. Yep. Because um, it, it's cool. And you guys have a great weekend. And Gracias. we will see you. We'll see you Monday. Yeah. Or tomorrow. Or no, whatever. definitely Monday. We'll see you on the flip side, but yeah. definitely see you Monday. All right, guys. See you guys. Bye. Bye.